Hey guys, this is EC Service Tech, and today what I wanted to go over is how do you pressure test a gas line? All right, so whether you're pressure testing this for low pressure natural gas or low pressure uh, propane, so we're talking about the natural gas running at about five to seven inch water column, and we're talking about propane running 11 to 13 inch water column. Um, what we're talking about is just pressure testing the gas line as a whole. So that's talking about not having the gas line connected to the appliances. All right, so this is the gas valve for a, a furnace, all right? And on it, right here, it actually says the max pressure coming into the electrical gas valve for a furnace or even for a water heater is half of a PSI. Some of them say 13 and a half uh, inch water column, all right? It's 27.6 water column, all right? 27.6 inch water column to every one PSI, all right? So really, natural gas, low pressure natural gas running somewhere around about a quarter of a PSI, and uh, low pressure propane at 11 to 13 inch water column is a little bit less than about half of a PSI, all right? So we're pressure testing it for those types of gases per international fuel gas code, all right? So you're gonna have to check your local codes and jurisdictions on what they want you to do. Uh, but around here, what I usually typically do is I'm pressure testing this at about 6 PSI G, all right? PSI G, G is the gauge, it's pounds per square inch gauge, all right? So pressure testing this with air, all right? You can also pressure test it with nitrogen, uh, dry inert nitrogen gas, all right? So either way, all right? So I pressure test it at 6 PSI. G, there's three reasons, three reasons in an international fuel gas code that stipulate that. So if it's a 30 PSI G gauge, then whatever pressure test that you're, you're, whatever target you're looking at, which is at 6 PSI G, it cannot be less than one fifth of the total gauge range. All right, so 6 PSI G is basically the lowest that you could pressure test this per the international fuel gas code with a 30 PSI G gauge. All right, you can pressure test it a little bit lower if you had a lower gauge, but typically uh, most of the supply houses that sell gas piping and everything like that are typically selling 30 PSI G gauges. All right, the next is that um, you have to pressure test higher than 3 PSI G. All right, and you have to pressure test at least one and a half times higher than the actual gas running through the piping. All right, so there's three reasons why I run it at about six PSIG. You can run it at a six and a half PSIG, whatever you want, something like that. All right, um, when the inspector comes up and inspects a gas line, you know, uh, what they're going to do is they're going to be pressing on this needle right here on the Schrader valve and seeing if the gas is going down. And this is an intact gas line to pipe through the, the whole building basically going everywhere is where there's going to be some type of an appliance, a water heater, um, a furnace, a dryer range, any anything like that, all right? Uh, so it's all pressure tested ahead of time, and if it holds pressure, uh, then, then you don't have any leaks in it, all right? Now, why does a pressure rise? So if you put 6 PSIG in there, you walk away, you come back the next day, and it's at 7 PSIG, all right? Well, that has to do with the temperature. The higher the temperature, then the higher the PSIG will go, all right? So when you have air in the lines, um, say you put it all the air in and the, and the compressor was sitting in a 70 degree area, you know, inside the building, you put it in, the next day it's 90 degrees, the pressure is going to be higher, all right? Um, if you took the compressor out of a cold work truck and it's, you know, 40 degrees outside and you put it in at 6 uh, PSIG, all right, and then it warms up to the house, to the to the temperature of the house. Maybe it's higher, then um, then the pressure will be higher. All right, so that also works conversely, where if you come up and you had six psi in it the day before, and now you only have five psig, maybe it's a colder day out now that you're checking it. So so really, what you want to do is when you get it at six psig or six point five psig you should go ahead and rate the temperature down on the, the pressure test as well. So just for your own reference, just so you know. All right. Um, but, uh, but that's basically how that works. All right. But make sure that you do not have it connected uh, to the electrical gas valves inside the water heaters and the, uh, um, the, the furnaces, or even if they're mechanical, you know, they're not rated 
for the uh, PSIG that you're pressure testing the system to. All right, so that's what one style pressure test looks like. Here's a different style pressure test. All right, and and another. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put pressure in this and see what happens. Then the other thing that you want to think about is when you are pressure testing. So when you're adding air in, you should already have the air metered down at the regulator for your air compressor. All right, run it down to about 25 psig because if you put pressure in this, what's going to happen is you're blowing in here and if you're blowing 100 psig in here you can damage your gauge all right so we have it set at about 25 coming in and so you know if we're only running that to six then we'll have to watch you know how how fast it happens all right you see it's going down a little bit so you can always get it higher and then just press in the trader valve in order to lower it all right so we're right about where we want to be at right now but just say you, you want to press on it, you can lower the needle a little bit. Tap on the gauge when you're done, all right? So initially when you're doing a pressure test, you put it in, you know, you figure your temperature is not going to change because you're there, right? Uh, put the air in, let it sit for about half an hour, um, and, and see if it drops. But basically when you put the pressure in, you want to tap it, all right? Not crazy hard, but a little bit. So when you tap it, it's going to seat that needle. If there's any friction in the needle, it's going to allow the needle to drop to its lowest point. So if you put air in it, okay, you tap it, and then a half an hour later you come by and you tap it again and the needle doesn't move, you know, it's likely that you do not have a leak, all right? But the, the longer you leave a pressure test on, the better. All right, in reference to test duration, uh, in the International Fuel Gas Code book, it says tests should not have to exceed 24 hours, all right? There is parameters for doing it in a lesser amount of time. All right, but you should go ahead and read up on your International Fuel Gas Code book if that is um, what your jurisdiction, your local code um, is, is using, if they are using the International Fuel Gas Code book. All right, but uh, that's how you do it, and hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.